Good afternoon, YouTube, and welcome back to Fat Cat Collections. And today I want to share with you guys um, um, a product by the company called Sonoff. Now, I've done a video review on this before, and what I want to do today is, is, is uh, share with you a how-to. And a lot of times when I review a product, I tell you about it, I tell you what it does, but I don't actually show you how to, how to make it or how to make it happen. And so what I want to do today is I, I had mentioned earlier uh, in the week when I reviewed the Sonoff Smart Plug, and this is what it looks like right here. Here's the box. And I'm going to actually show you what the device looks like. And I want to show you how to build one of these um, all by yourself, okay? This is really, really easy. Anybody can do it. Now, if you're not familiar with what a smart plug is, uh, basically there's different protocols of smart plugs. And basically all a smart plug is, it allows you to control a light or an appliance or a device, electronic device, uh, remotely. Whether that be with a wireless remote or whether it be with your phone or, um, or a wireless wall switch. There's many different ways to control these things. And what I want to show you today is just this is what one uh, just a, a similar brand uh, looks like. And this is a very old school technology. This is the old X10 protocol. And this is basically what a wall plug is. Basically, you plug it in the wall, you plug in another device to it, and it gives you the ability to control this. Now, this was able. Th this device uh, you controlled by a, a uh, handheld module, a little handheld remote, and not your phone. This is old school technology. This is like 80s, 90s smart home stuff. And I used to have this stuff in my house, and it worked for a while, but with Wi-Fi and all these devices coming down in price, it's just it was a no-brainer to go with this Wi-Fi stuff over um, this X10 stuff. You know, it's just really uh, it just doesn't work as well as this modern-day stuff. And basically, um, even if you were to go get a smart plug-in module that's Wi-Fi enabled, um, so the the new technology out there is going to be your Zigbee, Z-Wave, and Wi-Fi, uh, and in some cases Bluetooth. But Really, um, in order for you to use the Zigbee modules, you actually have to have a Zigbee uh, hub, which I actually do, and there's certain occasions where I'll use Zigbee, like for an in-wall switch or like some of the in inexpensive uh, Zigbee bulbs I just picked up the other day because they were uh, just dirt cheap on special at Lowe's. I figured I'd put it in my uh, floor lamp back there, and it works great. I could say, you know, hey, Google, turn on the office floor lamp. Okay. And as you see, the light came on. Hey, Google. Turn off the office floor lamp. And you see it turns off. And what that is being controlled is not with a module or what I'm about to show you how to build, although you could do it the same way if you wanted to. That's just actually a screw in Z Wave bulb. And that's a dip whole different thing. But what I'm going to show you today is a very inexpensive way to control a lamp or an appliance with a Wi Fi module. Now, if you were to go into Lowe's or go into one of your local stores, it doesn't matter where you go or if you go with any of the, the, the big boys, the big name brand ones actually plug in just like this. The cheapest I've been able to buy them is on eBay. And I did a review on a couple of those and they were uh, two for about $26, which is a little more affordable. But, you know, if you're going to retro or outfit your whole house with a lot of those things, it can add up pretty quick. And if you were to go into, like I said, one of your big box, depart or big box uh, hardware stores and try to buy this stuff, and buy it through some of the, the name brand companies, um, you're going to be paying at least anywhere from $25 to $40 per plug-in module. And that's a lot of money. So what I'm going to share with you guys today is the $5 Wi-Fi module. It's easy to build and it, it works flawlessly. Now, a lot of guys have actually hacked the firmware on this and allowed this to be able to uh, or make this um, uh, work with uh, SmartThings if you have a SmartThings hub. Me, I don't really care to have another app because really I'm not really too concerned most of the time with turning my smart devices on with the app. Mainly I want to turn them on with my voice. That's what, what I find is the easiest way to control any of the lights. Um, you know, I find that it, it was hard. I always found it um, with these smart things. It's cool to be able to control the light, but I can tell you right now, if I did not have uh, this voice control, I probably wouldn't have the amount of lights I have um, and devices on a, a Wi-Fi um, um Wi-Fi switch basically uh, because I don't want to have to pull up my phone every time I want to turn something on but walking around the house talking to the Google Home it turns on really easily and so to me my voice is more convenient than a switch because now I can turn on any light for the most part in the house with my voice wherever I'm at and remotely which is awesome as well so without further ado this is the device I'm going to show you today this is five dollars on eBay I'll put a link in the description it's called the Sonoff Basic and they make a few different modules, but this is going to be the one most people are going to use because some of the other ones are designed to be uh, um, integrated into your home wiring, whereas this is probably something that's meant to be done like that too, but this is a great build and a great way to, to put a lamp on Wi-Fi for $5, okay? And I'm about to show you how we're going to do that. So you're going to need a couple things. You're going to need a wire stripper, real basic. You don't have them. Go to Harbor Freight. 
I mean, piece of cake, cheap, right? You should have one as a man anyway. So anyway, okay, so wire stripper, you need a um, couple small screwdrivers. Uh, this is for a watch, as you know, a uh, watch tool, but um, this one here works fine because the screws are going to be uh, tightening down, are going to be Phillips head and your standard flathead, but uh, this fits both those perfectly. So something about that size right there. Okay, and then of course you're going to need uh, some extension cords. Now you can get any extension cords you want. I opted to go with your basic. Now these have already been cut, so I'm just going to show you what I've done. Is you take your basic extension cord. Let me go ahead and use the brown one here because I still have one piece I have to strip. So we'll use that. So you take your basic extension cord, six footer. These were $1.59. Uh, you cut it down the middle or whatever length you want. You could just cut it down the middle and use the big long length. I opted to go with something about a little over a foot, you know, so you can kind of hang it out of the, the wall socket and kind of get it down onto the ground a little bit. Um, not sure if that's a perfect length. Not sure if I'll regret doing that. But the nice thing about it is if you were to do this and you find it at a later date, God, I wish I would have had a longer extension. You could always do it again. So what you're going to do is just cut the extension right down the middle. Okay, this is what you're going to have. An end like this. Cut it the length you want. Okay. And then what you're going to do is just take your wire strippers and you're going to strip off about that much of the wire, okay? And I'm going to measure that for you. Roughly, you're going to be stripping off, looks about a little over a quarter of an inch. Double check that. Yeah, strip off a little more than a quarter of an inch and you'll be fine. Don't strip off too much, okay? And what you want to do is you want to basically just... Uh, we're going to use the white one here so you can see it a little better here because I want to get these finished first. So these are already stripped, of course. And what you want to do is just take the uh, end to just kind of twist them, okay? Give them a good tight twist. Do the same on the plug. And the reason why I like these extension cords is because they have marked on them your neutral. And you're going to need to know which one that is, okay? And so on these extension cords, a neutral is usually going to have the grooves, you're going to feel these little grooves down the side. That's going to be your neutral. And the neutral is going to be your larger plug, as you can see, right here. Now, I just want to say, if you decide to do this, you take full responsibility. I'm not an electrician, and it's always good to... Uh, now, not naturally, don't do this with this plugged in. A disclaimer, okay? Make sure it's not plugged in before you cut things. I mean, I, I, I feel like I shouldn't have to say that, but... A lot of stupid people in the world, so don't plug it in, okay, until you're done. You cut it, twist the ends, find the neutral, which is going to be grooved. Now, I don't take responsibility for the extension cord you buy, so, uh, you know, if you have to talk to an electrician, talk to an electrician, but all the ones I've done have the grooved ends, and it's the larger plug, what would be, the, I believe, the polarized side. See, it's larger right there, and you can see that's grooved. And what you're going to do is you're going to open up your sewn off, and then, again, this is what the box looks like. Just tear into the baby. All right, really, really simple, guys. And it's gonna come with this device and it come with some screws, okay? You got four screws. You're gonna have two of these, these are covers. I'm gonna show you what they do in a second. And then the sewn off device, the Wi-Fi switch. And so what we're gonna do is first we're gonna look for the input. They're labeled input and output. This is output. This is pretty self-explanatory, folks, okay? So then you're gonna take the input side which is your plug side. And what you're going to want to do is first take your screwdriver and inside here on the input, you're going to see two screws. You're going to see neutral and L. What you want to do is unscrew the screws. Now don't unscrew them all the way and tip it upside down because they're going to fall out. So keep it right side up. Unscrew the screws. Okay, you don't have to go all the way with this. All right. I don't even know. I think these things, yeah, they will come out. So you gotta be careful. So keep it right side up. Make sure you're, you're looking at the input side. Don't mess it up. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your extension cord that you already cut and stripped, and find that neutral side again, the grooved one. And get these kind of close together because you're gonna put these both in. Now, if, you, if it's easier to strip or not strip, but uh, uh, split this wire down a little more and do one at a time, you can do that. I opt to just kind of kind of bend them a little bit till I get them where they're. When I put them together, they kind of line up. And what you're going to do is just take that neutral and put it where the end is, right inside these little holes inside here. You're going to look inside there, see a little green plastic thing, and there's two holes. You're going to basically just slide the wires in there. And I'm just going to move off to the side because I need a little better lighting here. And you got to be careful because it is kind of a tight fit. So just kind of work it in there. 
and make sure when you're working you check to make sure that none of those wires uh, if it got frayed a little bit or one of the extra um, a piece of the copper make sure that's not touching the other side okay so once you got it in there hold it with your thumb grab your screwdriver and then tighten down those screws you just loosened okay and just tighten them down where they're nice and snug uh, don't over tighten them but tighten them where they're you know they're tight you're not really going to over tighten them with a handheld screwdriver like this but once they're in there, double check to make sure you did the right groove side, the end, the neutral is on the end. And then what you're gonna do is take this cover. And what this cover is, it has some teeth on it. And this is gonna crimp down on the wire so it's not gonna be pulled out easily, okay? So just put that right on there like so. <clears throat> and the teeth will kind of crimp down that, kind of center it. And then push down on it real hard. It's gotta put a little groove in the wire. Then you gotta come over, probably should have told you to do this first. Make sure your screws are ready to go. All right, now take them out of the bag. And while you're holding this thing, put one screw down in the hole here. Again, right there on the front, you can see the two holes. Put it in there, grab your screwdriver. And again, I can you can use a Phillips or whatever you want, but for me, this works fine. And just screw it down until it's tight. Do the same on the other side. Not rocket science, right? All right, and then just screw it down and that's gonna take a little bit of a bite on the wire and it's not gonna pull off. Then you're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. Again, use make sure that the groove side, the neutral, goes to the end, okay? Same exact process. Now, and I already finished one, okay? And this is what you're gonna get. This is now your smart plug-in module. And what I did is I make sure I close the other side if I'm not gonna be plugging two lamps into it or whatnot, okay? And uh, why don't we go ahead and, and uh, hook this thing on up. So uh, what you're going to need is you're going to need, <clears throat> let me find it here. Let me get my cell phone. All right, what we're going to do is you're going to need a certain app, okay? And the app you're going to want to download from the App Store is, and bear with me a second here, the app is, Let me just double check here because there's two apps on here. I forget which one. Uh, you are going to download from the App Store, drum roll, Ewe Link. You got to download the Ewe Link app. And the app looks just like this. It's got an E. It looks almost like a Microsoft E. And just click that, of course, once you download it. And you can see I already have two devices in there. So once this is downloaded, you're going to sign up for an account. It's totally free to do that. Uh, there is going to be some uh, Chinese writing on there. I believe it's Chinese. Uh, disregard, you know, don't worry about that. Everything's in English. And what you're going to do is once you download this app, okay, you're going to have, it's going to say right there, all devices, okay? And so I'm just going to put this down for a second. And what I'm going to do is, I'm not really sure where I'm going to put these devices quite yet, but um, just to pick something easy, let's go ahead and use, uh, let's go ahead and use these, these, uh, this fireplace back here, okay? Now, nice thing about these sawed-off switches um, they're great for electric fireplace control. Now, I always say I'm always a little leery about controlling things um, that are putting things on Wi-Fi that are uh, have the potential to go on because in the event of a power failure with these things, they will default to on. So if your power goes out, comes back on, you're going to come home with these things on. Um, so one thing that's very important is to not have something plugged in here that could be a hazard. Now, I plug my fireplaces on these, but what I do is most electric fireplaces have the ability to keep the um, element or the heating element off. So worst case is if I come home and these are on, I make sure that's always off and you're going to have just the ambiance light on, which is like a 40 watt bulb in there uh, in most cases. That's just making it look like a fake fire, okay? But just to show you how to hook it up, you may not want to hook it up to a fireplace, but nice thing that these things will support, uh, I believe it's 2200 watts, uh, which is really great because that's a pretty big load uh, to put on something like that. Now, I'm not going to say if you were to put this on um, you know, a fireplace, I know that when I have my fireplace on in this room, I do have it hooked up to an extension cord going to the fireplace. I don't use this one very often, uh, but the cord will get a little warm uh, because it is a, quite a draw. And these things, cords aren't really designed to be running through a fireplace. But, you know, I keep my eye on it. So let's just pretend that we're not using a fireplace, but we're using a lamp. But, but one thing about it, again, if you were going to make one specifically for a fireplace, you could go ahead and get a beefier extension cord and do the same thing. The device will handle the 2200 watts. And most fireplaces draw that I've seen a max 
of like 1500 watts, but check the specs on those fireplaces. But today, let's go ahead and hook that up. So what we're gonna do is, and I am gonna use one of these on the fireplace because I'm not really sure where else to use them because they were so cheap I ordered four, and so why not just get them, right? So what we're gonna do is, you just gotta take this, like so, and plug it in. And so also hooked up this extension cord is these lamps back here, okay? So the lamps and fireplace are on the same extension cord. Once I, I move the fireplace, I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes today, show you how to set it up. Um, I will put this behind the fireplace and it'll only be functioning on the fireplace, okay? So just for argument's sake, I'm gonna plug it into the wall right now. And once we plug it in, and I'm going to grab you here and show you. Don't worry about that. It's fine. <laughs> uh, once we plug this in, you're going to see that on the front of the device, there's this little green light flashing. Okay? So what we're going to do at that point is we're going to go ahead and we want to connect this to Wi-Fi. So we're going to go ahead and press and hold that button. And once we do that, as you, oops, as you can see, it's flashing fast. So now we're going to come over to, let me put you back down here. Bear with me, guys. I know I need to get a tripod. But we're just going to have to work with it right now, okay? I haven't even showered yet. I just got off work. All right, so now it's in flashing. It's in uh, Wi-Fi mode or pairing mode, we'll call it. You're going to go to your app and you're going to hit plus. And now it says pairing your device, and I'm going to read it to you. It says enter into uh, enter into pairing mode. Press and hold the pairing button for five seconds. The LED will flash. It has some other words in there, LED, humidifier, etc. Will flash, uh, and it's got a little blinking uh, notification. It shows you exactly what it's going to be doing. So it's flashing at this speed, and you're going to go ahead and just click next. Okay, once you click next, it's going to show, uh, you're going to enter your Wi-Fi credentials. So I'm going to do that without you guys seeing, okay? And we're going to hit next. It says, please grant EWE link network or location permission or you cannot add the device. So just say, okay. Allow EWE link device location. And what's happening now, it says pairing. Okay. And it's going through the pairing process, as you can see. There's four steps to this. We're on step number three, pairing. And it says uh, connecting device. And now it says uh, found first generation device ITEAD-10001 EFEA7. So just let it do its thing. It's got kind of a status bar on there, as you can see. Now, I know the first time I tried to do one of these, um, I had to redo it. So we'll just see what happens. Some of these things, it'll kind of freeze up, and then you have to go back out, and then you'll go back into the app, and the next thing you know, it's, it's linked. So if it fails, just go through the same process again. But right now, it just says found the generation, uh, or found first generation device. Um, it still shows the status bar. We've, we've almost gotten to one. one uh, there's three different sections of the status bar. We filled up the first section. Let's see what we're doing here. The status light is still flashing on the device. And one thing I did fail to mention, which is why we might have to go back and do this, is that if you're doing this on a cell phone, which most likely you're going to be doing, um, what's going to happen here is what these devices do is they actually connect to the device and then they disconnect yourself. It'll disconnect your phone from your, your local network, okay? And then, of course, it's going to send that information because it's connecting to the device itself in order to send those credentials. But if you have a cell phone, when, you know what happens once you disconnect from your network? It tries to connect to the cellular network. So it might lose its connection with the actual device. So uh, we might have to do this over. I'm just going to go ahead real quick and just turn off. And I probably should have told you to do this here. But it's a good idea when you're doing anything like this where you're setting up these devices that's anything uh, nowadays that's Wi-Fi enabled is to go over to your mobile networks and disable data. Okay, now let me go back. Okay, so it said pairing failed, so we're gonna try it again. So you can see right here, we got an error message. We're gonna say try again, and go back to the device, press and hold, get it in pairing mode again. Five second press, 
or you don't really have to count, wait till it starts flashing. The device started flashing, I'm gonna hit next again. Again, my Wi-Fi credentials are already in there. If they're not in there, enter your Wi-Fi credentials. I'm gonna click next. And again, it says connecting to device, please wait. So let's see if we have better luck this time. And I have to tell you, you know, I already have two of these set up and they just work flawlessly. The, 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 uh, the reaction time or whatever, you know, the reaction time on how quick when you actually say the voice command or you actually uh, press the button on, your, on the app, it's really, really quick. And what's nice is that, you know, I actually don't really go into the device to uh, turn them on or off. I actually, like I said, I use my voice for everything in the house, whether it be through uh, the Echo or it be through Google. I like using the Google more because it's just it's more accurate. Uh, you, you don't have to be so specific with it. It just kind of knows what you're doing. Okay, so here we go. So now you get to the fourth part of this the setup where it says um, com you can click uh, uh, complete or name my device. So I'm going to go ahead and name this right now and just delete what it says in there. I'm going to name it office fireplace and so I'm just going to hit complete it says add a device successfully this device connect to Wi-Fi it may take a few minutes please wait OK so I'm just going to go ahead and click OK and now what has happened is as you can see it's been added to my list of devices and now what, let's go ahead and test this to make sure it worked and so I'm just going to go ahead and plug in the light and you can see behind me there So the light's plugged in, and now I'm going to go ahead and use the app and go ahead and give it a try. So let's turn it on. So we have an error message right now for whatever reason or another. Okay, so the newly device needs one to two minutes to connect to your Wi-Fi. So I kind of jumped the gun on that. So let's just give it a second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to close the app. I'm going to reopen the app. And it looks like now, I failed to mention again, the light was actually flashing slow. The light is now fully lit green on the device. So let's go ahead and try it now. So there you go. Press the on button. Press the off button. And it's almost a split second for those things to turn on or off. Now, once you have this set up, you might be saying, well, I have an Alexa, or I have a Google Home. How do I set it up? Well, once you get to that point, you're going to go into your, let's say, you have a, let's, let's say you have a Google Home. You're going to go ahead and enable the skill. So you go to Google Home right here. Go ahead and open that up. And so already once I open that up, uh, you're going to go ahead and click the menu, and you want to click Home Control. Okay. All right, and I'm just going to scroll down the list of devices, and what will happen here is you will go ahead and add this device by clicking the press button. You'll add the eWe link. It'll give you a list of different, we'll go add just for the hell of it. You add device, okay, I'm going to go do that again. So right there, add the, right here the plus button, and it's going to show a whole list of different services. You're going to find the eWe link. Now, mine's already in there, okay? So I'm going to go back, and what will happen is, uh, this thing will, oops, smart things, Samsung Wii Link. All right, so I'm going to go add again, and you'll see the link services right here, and you can see Smart uh, smart, uh, smart Wii Link. That's what they call it on that. It's, it's got, it, so it says two devices right now, so I'm going to click that, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlink the account because I've already linked it. So what would probably be smart for you is to get all your devices set up then. Um, whoops. I'm sure there's an easier way of doing that. Let me see if there's an easier way of doing that. Because I'm going to hope that I don't lose the names I've already given them. I don't think I will, but let's go ahead and just try to unlink it, okay? I was hoping I could just add the device. But it doesn't look like we're going to be able to. So, uh, all right. We're just going to click Add, and we're going to click Smart We Link, and we're going to unlink it. In my case, I'm going to unlink it, okay? In your case, get them all set up first, named in the eWeLink app, and then link it to uh, your, your, uh, your uh, 
Google Home, okay? So let's see here. So I'm going to go back. It's still showing that. And let's go add device. So now we have to go find the device again. I'm going to scroll down to eWe Link. And here it is. This is what you will see. Smart We Link. I don't know why they call it Smart We Link. It's called eWe Link. That's what they have it labeled in there. And it's going to open up a, a menu here. It's going to ask you to enter in your um, credentials that you or your account information that you signed up with. Uh, let's see if I can remember mine. I made a mistake of entering my phone number first to link it up instead of just an email address, but um, should still work. It should still work. Let's see here. Oops. United States, of course. Log in. All right, so this one here, I actually used my email address. Must have been the other one I used. So. Give me a second here, guys. All right. Try logging in. Let me try that again because <laughs> that didn't work. All right, let's try that again here. Okay, so it's linking the account right now. It says linking your eWe Link account, as you can see. And once it's linked, it's going to ask you to assign rooms. And so right now, it's pulled up the devices that I have linked to my account. As you can see, you have bedroom fireplace, bookshelf lamp, and office fireplace. And so what I'm going to do is just reassign those rooms. So the bedroom fireplace is in the bedroom. The bookshelf lamp is in the... Uh, upstairs hallway and you could add you can name your own rooms in there um, that's why upstairs hallways are that's something I previously uh, had added to Google and then office fireplace we're gonna add that to the office and then once you're done with that I'm just gonna hit done okay and there we go it says you're all set and you just gotta click got it so now with that being said we should be able to use our voice to control this in our case lamp or fireplace so let's try it okay Google Okay, Google. Oops. Ah, so what I forgot to do was our Google's plugged into this outlet here. So let's just unplug her for a second there because she's actually turned off. And I'm going to use the one from the other room. Okay, Google. Turn on the office fireplace. As you can see, it turned on, and that's what exactly is going to happen. Okay, Google, turn off the office fireplace. And there you go, just like so. So that's it. That's about all you have to do to get this thing to work. Uh, very, very straightforward, very simple to hook up. And now you can have voice control on anything you plug in, or you can use the eWe Link app to turn the devices on or off, depending on uh, whatever, you know, however you want to do that. Uh, one thing to mention as well, I learned this the other day, that if you add, if you have an Android phone, you add the Google Assistant on your phone, where you can actually, you can say those words, okay, or it would be, okay, I said, hey, Google, which for the other one, but I could say, okay, Google, and what will happen is my phone, whoops, it just opened up, so hang on, let me cancel that. The phone will actually open up the Google Assistant on your Android device, whether it be a tablet or a phone, and you can speak that command directly into the phone. Now, what's really interesting about that is that if you do that, even if you're not home, that will actually communicate with your network and turn on your lights. You could actually voice control all your devices remotely now. Uh, so let's say I'm at work or on my way home, I could speak that or text that and actually turn on any device I want in my house for the most part, whenever I have one of those smart devices, uh, one of these Sonoff switches or a plug-in module, a LifeX bulb, uh, whatever I want to do, I can actually do it. And that's why, uh, if you haven't checked out my other video where I say, do you need a smart, a smart home hub? 
In my opinion, get a Google Home for your smart home hub because really that's what it is. It's a voice controlled smart home hub. And because the reason I say this is because it really does play well with so many different devices out there. Whereas like smart things, you have to go in here and solder a bunch of things in order to get that to work with smart things. And the Google Home really is the best hub in my opinion. So guys, that's my uh, my 30 minute video, my how to on how to make your very own uh, Sonoff smart things plug for five dollars I will put a link in the description where you can get this uh, through eBay uh, shipped to your home uh, It's a no-brainer you if you want to get them locally or it from the United States It'll probably cost you a little more, but I don't mind waiting It took about 15 days and I got four of them delivered to my house for twenty dollars. So uh, Absolutely fantastic. So guys, thank you very much for watching if you like the channel subscribe uh, Remember if you have any questions don't hesitate to comment remember that any purchases you make uh, any purchase at all, if you do it through my links in the description, it'll take you to eBay. If you're made within 24 hours, click the link. It does help to support the channel, and I do appreciate that. So remember today, if you do subscribe, to click that little bell to be notified anytime I upload a new video. And as always, have a wonderful day, guys. Take care.